Marley thought she was very happy with her boyfriend. They were spending a lot of time together and their wedding day was already planned. But shortly before the wedding, Marley started noticing something strange about her boyfriend. It didn't take her long to realize what he was up to. And when she saw this detail during the ceremony, they were done. She grabbed a microphone from the pastor's hand and left her boyfriend in an unbelievable way. In the beginning of their relationship, everything seemed fine. Marley and Spencer spent a lot of time together and she couldn't imagine a better boyfriend. They had no children yet, but after four years together, it was time for a beautiful wedding. The two lovebirds were going to get married and the idea of having their own family started to develop. But a few months before this ceremony took place, Spencer started behaving more and more strangely. And why is it heartbreaking? Spencer kept coming home late from work. And we're not talking about a few hours of overtime. No, Spencer sometimes stayed out until midnight. He would often come home exhausted and absolutely had no attention for Marley. Where had that friend gone who had done everything for her and was always so sweet? It was almost as if she was no longer recognized by Spencer. She was also beginning to wonder what he had to do at work so late every time. Because every time she called his office in the evening, no one answered. It was as if the company was just closed. Yet, Spencer really told her that he and the colleagues had to work a lot over time. Hmm, pretty strange, right? Marley soon began to doubt about the story her boyfriend told her every time. Spencer told her the other day that he was deep diving into the company's numbers with his colleague Clark and that it was probably going to be a late one. However, Spencer did not know Marley also had Clark's number. And when she called his colleague, he told him that he had just gone home at 5 p.m. that day. There were holes in her fiancé's story and Marley did not trust it one bit. And Marley's distrust only grew more when the following happened a few months before their wedding. Every Tuesday night, Marley and Spencer had planned every evening together. They would then go out to do something fun together, but this night turned out differently than expected. Spencer received a mysterious phone call at 8.15 p.m. He had to come to the office immediately, he told his girlfriend. Date night was off, that pissed Marley off, but an emergency at work can happen. But then she didn't know he had very different plans. Spencer had been gone for a couple of hours by now, and Marley sat down on the sofa disappointed with a bowl of popcorn. She decided to watch the movie by herself. Not what she had in mind, but she could hardly blame Spencer. But as she walked back to the kitchen halfway through the film for a second glass of wine, she suddenly saw something standing in the corner of the room. It was her boyfriend's work bag. And the bag contained all his office stuff. He would never go to the office without this bag. She tried to call him, but Spencer simply did not answer his phone. Eventually, she went to bed frustrated, but then she suddenly heard the door at 3 a.m. It was Spencer trying to sneak into the house. He's sleeping on the couch, Marley thought, and that's exactly what he did. The next morning, Marley was walking down the stairs when she saw her boyfriend lying on the sofa. He hadn't even bothered to take off his clothes. At first, she wanted to confront him, but just before she tried to shake him awake, she suddenly smelled something. What is that smell? It smells like woman's perfume. At that point, she decided she didn't want to confront him. She had her suspicions, but you don't break up a relationship and certainly an engagement just because of suspicions. But during the weeks that followed, Spencer at one point had to work overtime almost daily and always smelled similar when he came back home. Really cheap and nasty smell. Marley couldn't take it anymore, she wasn't going to wait any longer and decided to investigate. She knew he was hiding something and when he was at work one day, she threw the whole house upside down. She looked in the drawers, under the bed and even searched his entire hobby shed. But nowhere could she find a logical clue. Whenever Marley asked Spencer about it, he always had the same answer. Sorry, honey, it's just been a really busy week at work. She didn't believe any of that anymore by now. But then she made a breakthrough. It was the first time in days that her boyfriend was sleeping in the same bed when in the middle of the night, his phone received a text message. Her hand quickly reached out for his bedside table. If he woke up from the vibration, she had lost her chance. She unlocked his phone and read the message. It was a woman called Sophie a name that was unfamiliar to Marley. And seeing that she had sent her fiancé a message before, she started reading further. The conversation started about three months ago. It was indeed a colleague and she was new to the business. That explained why he started acting weird from that period onwards. Because when Marley read the messages, everything became clear. She was the one who lured him to the office every time. 
Their conversation history is full of flirtatious phrases. And when she read, Hey baby, is your wife already asleep? Then come over here quickly. She knew she had enough. Her husband was cheating with a colleague. They were supposed to get married in a few weeks. How could he do this to her? He had even invited her to the wedding. At that moment, Marley could have shaken up her boyfriend to confront him. But the fire in her eyes had a far more fierce plans with that imposter. She decided to come up with a plan that her future ex-boyfriend would not soon forget. She was the first one to tell her friends about her boyfriend's cheating. I would dump him immediately and cancel the wedding, they all shouted. But Marley wanted none of it. She had a much better plan in mind. The wedding must and will go ahead, but not because I love him. He will pay for what he has done and this is how. She walked over to her friends and whispered something in their ears. It was the big day of the wedding and it looked like a great party. At least so it seemed to the visiting guests and of course her husband to be Spencer. Because that was exactly Marley's plan. She had thought everything out to the perfection now that the big moment was finally here. The guests were already sitting in the flower garden waiting for her to walk down the aisle. But first she had to tell her father about the plan. He would accompany her to the altar and had the honor of being one of the first people along with her friends to hear her clever plan. Now he was due in on the plot. Let the show begin. Spencer didn't notice anything wrong. He had been outside for a while laughing with his friends who were telling, who were telling jokes about him. He had no idea how he was going to be made fun of at any moment in front of an entire gathering of people. And his colleagues were also amongst this group. He had even unbeknownst to Marley's arrangement for her to be a bridesmaid. She would come with a purple dress Marley had so carefully picked out behind her. How dare he rub it in my face so obviously, Marley thought. The ceremony was about to begin and everything was in place for this fall. Spencer was already standing at the altar with a broad smile on his face and everyone played their part perfectly. Her father brought her gently smiling down the long carpet to the altar and Marley's friends who were, of course, bridesmaids too looked unhappily. Of course, they knew better, but they were standing next to Spencer's colleague and therefore also had a role to play. Marley took a seat next to her cheating boyfriend and let the priest speak his first few words. The pastor welcomed all present and first told a general story about Spencer and Marley. They'd been together for a long time and according to the pastor, would be overjoyed together. His story continued with the most ironic sentence of the evening. They share everything together and have no secrets from each other. He should know, Marley thought, but the moment she'd been waiting for was almost there. For she knew that the bride and groom themselves were also about to say something, then she would strike. First, it was Spencer's turn and he got the microphone from the pastor. The countdown could begin. The pastor held the microphone in front of Spencer's mouth and it was now up to him to tell an interesting story for all the people present. He first started by thanking everyone present and told everyone how beautiful his almost wife looked. But as he made his speech, which was mostly about himself, Marley suddenly smelled something. She followed her nose and then once again smelled that cheap perfume smell that had been clinging on to her friend lately. She turned around and then saw this terrible sight. The smell was very clearly coming from Spencer's colleague, who had stepped forward a little irritated. That horrible human being does have guts to suddenly step forward like that, Marley thought. She pinched her nose together momentarily, avoiding that disrespectful smell. But then she saw the following. Beneath the drag and a bunch of flowers, she saw that the woman was holding her phone. She was typing something and a few seconds later, she heard Spencer's phone buzz in his pocket. Molly was so furious and now seized the moment to make a complete fool of him. Indeed, it was her moment to speak and she left no seconds unused. The microphone was snatched from the pastor's hand and Marley grabbed her phone. For what Spencer did not know was that Marley had secretly made a copy of his SIM card and all the phone details. Every time he received a phone call or a message, she too received it on her device. She knew about all the dirty games and would now use them to bring Spencer and his colleague to the ground. She opened her phone and projected all his conversations on the big screen. Pay close attention to Spencer's reaction. Spencer was startled and tried to run away quickly at first, but Daddy Dearest was in on the plot and held Spencer down. You're not going anywhere. You stay put and watch what you did to my daughter, he told them. Marley's girlfriends, who of course were also bridesmaid, also held his colleague in place. The big screen showed every lie, cheating messages and pictures and all the invited people could watch. 
Spencer burst into tears and begged Marley to stop, but Marley was not done. She told in front of everyone that he did not deserve her and that she would never want to see him again. She could have cut off this much earlier, but explained that he did not deserve the respect. Marley deserved a man who was loyal to her and went 100% for her and Spencer was the complete opposite of this. Finally, her father let go of Spencer, after which he quickly left the wedding venue. Marley only saw him once more after this when he came to collect his things from home. She hugged her father who told her he was proud of her and that she would eventually find the one. And this statement would come true sooner than Marley and her father expected. Because less than two months later she met Jonas, a sweet gentleman. He had a British accent and worked at a dock shelter, where Marley happened to come to pick a pet that day. They clicked immediately and they went on a date. The two promised to take it slow, they really wanted to get to know each other, but so far things were going great. Jonas was loving, honest and paid full attention to her. He also clicked well with her family and also helped her get over her terrible past relationship. Fine, because Marley deserves genuine love this 